Alright guys, welcome to the tutorial on how to do your senior tributes. As you'll notice, we're opening up GIMP. Remember, if you can't get to GIMP, simply open here, type in GIMP, and it will pop up under your apps, under which to run. Also, I've gone ahead and logged into the Google account for our publications. I'm in the folder of the tribute where I'm going to be working. It's important because I'll need the message later. I'll also need to make sure that I know how to spell all the names. I also need to make sure that I have all of these pictures downloaded to a local hard drive. Again, to do that, we right click, we download. Okay. Also, when I have all my pictures here, I want to make sure that they are all formatted correctly. As you can see, I can see some edging right here on this picture. So when I go to put this into the tribute, I'm going to have to crop that out. So we'll look at that here in just a second. Once GIMP is loaded, we're going to drag our first full, first file into it, and it's going to be the background. Always start with the background image. Drag, drop it in. So, these are custom created just for you guys. You don't have to mess with them. It's the right size, all that good stuff. Don't forget your shortcut keys. If we need to look in on something, we're going to hit plus. That's shift and then the equal sign to go in closer. If we need to back out, we're going to use the minus button. No shift, just the minus button. So, what we have here is a wonderful picture of Richie McKercher. And we're going to be tucking pictures right in here and right in here beside of it. Now, Richie and his mom and dad cheated. They actually were able to sneak in an extra picture because they used a picture frame. Kudos to them. So remember on GIMP, it's very, very simple to get confused. We have our layers over here in this area. And we have a lot of the tools that we'll be using over here in this area. Don't forget, though, that when we start working on stuff, this will change back and forth and that becomes a history panel and sometimes that also will affect you. Also, your tools up here, if we are trying to move something we need to make sure our move tool is selected. If we are selecting we need to have a rectangle select and again if we are trying to rotate we're using a rotation tool. If we're trying to scale it up and down we're using the scale tool. So just don't forget that these tools need to be selected before you start messing with stuff. All right, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. We're going to take our first picture, Richie number one, and we're going to toss it onto the image. Now, you'll notice this thing is freaking massive. It's way bigger than it needs to be. So we're going to start off by using our scale tool. Boom, click it. Do not move it up or down. Just simply click on the layer you want to adjust scale-wise. Now, very important this button right here of the chains. If the chains are unlocked and we go to scale, it's going to disfigure this picture. It's going to make him squatty, or it's going to make him skinny, or it's going to do weird stuff to poor old Richie. So let's not do that. Reset. Boom. Let's go to lock the chains, and we're going to size it down to where we think we might want it. Now, if we need to move it to where we can see it, click in the middle center squares, move it, and again, just kind of move it around to what we might like. Now, scale it. We feel like that's a pretty good size. However, this size picture is not going to work tucked in under here unless we do a little cropping action. So we're going to crop it just a touch. We're going to select our rectangle tool. Rectangle tool is just to select it. Do not get confused and use the crop tool. If you do the crop tool, this is what happens. Not good. So let's use this rectangle tool. We're going to select what we want and we're just going to highlight it. I want a little bit of this bridge just because I'm going to be tucking a lot of this underneath Richie's hand and so it's not vital information but it's you know it's still part of the picture that's kind of nice and we're going to preserve Richie so there we go now I'm going to copy we can also use our shortcut keys control C and then I'm going to paste it control V all right now it creates a floating layer we don't want that paste it onto this because we're getting rid of all of this. We're going to paste it to a new layer. So we right click on that to a new layer and now we have our pasted layer and we've got Richie underneath of it. You'll always know what's selected because it's got yellow lines around it. Now we have the whole thing selected. So we're going to get rid of this one because we don't want that extra information. We want our cropped selection instead. So delete. Delete that layer. Now there's good old Richie. Now we can take him and again, move tool. You saw me mess up right there, very easy. And I'm going to tuck him right here. Now remember, we're going to put a cob over top of this. So for right now, 
I like the size of that picture, and I like where it is. Let's go to the next one and do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up as you know, the magic of media. Once again, make sure we've got that selected. We're going to scale them down. And right here, we can make a decision. If we want this to be the same size as this, we can force the scale to a specific height right here by typing in a number, a numerical value. So when we got more four or five pictures lined up beside each other, we want them the same height. Go ahead and force it to the same height here so that they are exactly perfect. Don't try to eyeball them. Go ahead and use the numerical value here by typing it in. But for this, I'm going to have this one a little bit higher. I, I want it a touch taller than the other one. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it where I want it. Let's go 510. Sure, shoot, why not? And we're going to scale it that way. Now, once I've got that there, I'm going to go ahead and move it into position. I'm going to eyeball it again. We've got about that much space over here. I want about the same amount of space over here. So eh, that looks to be about good. Remember, his hand's going to come across and his arm is going to be all over this picture. So we may have to come back and rescale this again. So we're going to hold off on adding the borders just yet. All right, let's go back into it. It's time to put that cob on it. So grab your cob picture, and it's going to go on top. Boom, drag and drop it in there. Oh, it would have been nice if it was the right size, but it's not. Not a big deal. Make sure we've got that layer selected. This is our Richie cob, and we're going to go ahead and scale it again. Remember, when we're scaling, always make sure those chains are secure. We do not want to alter the way this is, especially with the cob, because then it won't line up right over top of the background image. So here we go. Drag and drop it to where it's a little bit more manageable. I'm going to move it. And the easiest way for me is to line up one of these corners. Okay, Try to line that up there, and then scale down to that corner or up to that top edge, whichever you've decided to do. So I'm going to scale it down to that corner. Well, he moved. It happens. So let's try to get them about the same height. Now, again, remember, we can zoom in and really take a look at this. So let's do that. Let's zoom in and get Richie right where I think he's going to be. I think that's going to do it. I, I might be wrong, but I think that's going to do it. Now, we're going to use our Move tool once again, and we're just going to move him and try to match him up. Now, very important. Sometimes we don't get it perfect, and you can see right here we've got a double ear. We don't want that mess. And we don't want a weird, funky head shape, too. That's made him look like he's an alien. So we can definitely use our fine moving with our arrow keys. We can use our arrow keys on this. So let's go ahead and full screen this so we can see what we're working on here in GIMP. And we're going to move it over. And I'm going to move it down to get rid of that bottom earlobe. Now, if my picture is not cobbed well, we're going to have some issues with this. Luckily, I think we've done a good job on the cob here. Kudos to whoever cobbed this one for me. Now, let's look down through and make sure that there's no funky edges, there's no double hands, double legs, or anything weird going on. All right, so we got nothing there. No double fingers over here. Everything looks pretty dang good. So, again, we look at the head, nothing weird. With ladies that we've cobbed their hair out, it's going to be very important that we get it to the right size to where the hair naturally connects with the background hair. And that might be tricky on some of them. Again, if you need to resize this, resize it up and down. Better to be too big than to be too small on this scale. All right, let's back on out and take a look. All right, sweet. So we've got Richie. He's over top of the picture here. And like I said, I was worried that might be a bit too big. So we're going to have to resize this layer and make it just a touch smaller so that it is not covered up by Richie's hands. So just a touch lower here. Let's go just a scotch more. I'm going to go 440 because I like even numbers. It really does not matter. Scale, and let's take a look at it. All right, so we've got our images placed. We've got our cobs placed, and we are looking pretty good to go on to the next step. All right, guys, we are ready to work on our borders. And I have cheated already a little bit, fast forwarded, and have added some borders. But I want to show you, if you need to resize, how to get rid of these borders as well. So if we look here at our pasted layer, we're going to go into it and do the layer boundary size. So let's say we needed to make this picture bigger. For some reason in our, in our layout, we didn't like the way it worked. So we want to remove those borders. It's pretty easy. 
we have added 10 to both sides, so it's pretty easy to just take away 10. So we're going to subtract from 395. We're going to subtract 10, make it 385. And from our heights, it was 450. We're going to subtract 10 and make it 440. Now, it's very important that we center it. It should go negative 5 all the way around it. And so it's going to decrease our frame size to negative 5, which is essentially what we added. The fill doesn't matter at this point. Fill with white doesn't matter because we're getting rid of it right now. So resize it. And bada bing, bada boom, our border is gone. We'll do the same thing on the other layer. And again, this is if we needed to resize. The reason that we have to get rid of this border before we resize is because if we don't, it is going to make that border bigger than the 5 pixel that we have already assigned for our borders. All right, so how we add the borders is the same thing in reverse. Here we go. Layer boundary size. We are going to add 10 to the width. So 385 goes to 395. Our height goes from 440 to 450. And we're going to center it. All right, now. I used to tell everybody to lock the chains, but GIMP doesn't actually do it correctly. It does not give you even space all the way around, even though you preserve the chains. So you need to make sure to add 10 to both the width and the height to get an even 5 pixel border all the way around. All right, so we have a choice on what we want to fill this empty space with. We're going to fill it with white for this picture because our background is dark. We could choose to do our foreground color, and that would give us pretty much any color that we choose here on our palette and have a border of that color as well. But for right now, it's easiest for this one, especially it's going to make it pop for them to be white as we saw before. Resize that and we're good to go. And we're going to do the same thing on this one. So 295 goes to 305, 441 goes to 451. We're going to center it, fill it with white and click the resize. Again, to get to that menu, we right click and layer boundary size. All right, we've got our layers added to the borders on that. We take a look. Ah, we love it. It looks great. Oh, things are just they're really looking up right now. And we are going to start adding a text box. Now, my fonts are installed differently than they will be on most of your laptops, but don't worry about it. We're going to go ahead and create a text box. I found that it's easier to create it a little bit lower just so that I can get this box to pop up for me. Okay? Now, <clears throat> on this, we're going to type in our first our font. It's Cooper Hewitt. It's going to pop up. Nine's going to say light, but yours is going to say 711. So yours will be Cooper Hewitt 711. It'll look just like that. Okay? But for mine, because I said it's installed differently, it's going to be light. Light. 110 is our size for our tributes, unless it's a full page. Full page will be 150. We're going to click in here, and we have to decide what color do we want our text to be. This is a dark background, so we're going to want our text to be white. And we're going to type in Richie's name, all caps. Put that caps lock on, R-I-C-H-I-E-M-C-K-E-R-C-H-E-R. -E -E and then we're going to select just the first part of it. And what you're going to do is you're going to click the bold button. All right, and that's going to unbold the first part of his name because your Cooper Hewitt 711 is going to naturally be bolded. Mine's in reverse, so don't worry about what I'm doing. This is what yours should look like after you get done. Bada bing, bada boom. We can move this text up and down, left and right, all sorts of nice ways until we like it right here in the corner, tucked right nicely in the corner. Next, we're going to go right back into this. Again, we're going to use Cooper Hewitt. We can put it in here to begin with. And we are going to draw a new text box. This one, we're going to be doing smaller text. I think I'm going to tuck it here. I've got more space on this side than I do on this side. And I'm going to go ahead and drop the font size down to, he's got a fairly short message from his parents, 60 pixels, or sorry, 60 font size. We'll see if that's good or not. Draw my little box. And now I need to get my message. Thankfully, we've got everything organized in our Google Drive. So we can pull the message right here, just to open it up. And, oh, look at that, a little Bible verse. They've got it formatted the way they want it. I'm going to copy it once again. Again, Control-C, always a good idea. Shortcut keys are fast. And then I'm going to Control-V, paste it in there. Now, I didn't change my text font uh, color, so I'm going to need to do that. Quickly select all the text, Control-A, 
and I'm going to make it white so we can see it. Well, I was wrong. 60 is too much, so not a big deal. Again, we have everything selected. Control A to select everything, and I'm going to move my font size down to, shoot, let's try 30. Okay, a little too small. I want it to fill up this box, so we'll just kind of experiment around. How about 40? Oof, we're getting close now. Almost have it. In fact, if I cheat just a little bit more, I think it's going to look great. Yeah. All right. Now, yours is going to be naturally bold, so you shouldn't have to do this. Boom. All right. That's the bold button. Don't forget that one. All right. We're looking pretty dang good. I like the way it looks. Just make sure anything we want formatted. Hmm. Well, I do see one thing. I want these lines down on the bottom. So I'm going to go and edit that and put those lines down there. Okay. Remember, we can do our different justifications. If something's going to look better left aligned or right justified, then fix it. Okay. But for me, I like centered. It's going to look good for this space. And okay, I like it. At this point, we're going to add what's called a drop shadow. The first time you do this on your computer with your login, you're going to have to save the preset. After that, it'll be there every time, so you won't have to put it in. We go up to Filters, we go to Light and Shadow, and then we're going to go to Drop Shadow. Make sure that your selection is, of course, this, okay? Your title or your, your word box, either one. Drop Shadow. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do 10. Make sure your chains are locked. That's going to make this 10 as well, so it's X10, Y10. Our blur radius is going to be 5, and our opacity is going to be 1. Cool. Our color should always be black. And at this point, we can hit the plus to save this as a new setting. We're going to call this one, shoot, let's call it name. It doesn't really matter. Now, when I go from the future, I can go right here, find name, and right there it is. Okay, so I won't have to add that again. Click OK, and you'll notice it was very slight what it did up here. Just very, very slight, just to give it a little bit of a oomph, extra emphasis. I like that emphasis very much. All right, let's select our other text box. We're going to lighten shadow, drop shadow. Again, select our name preset that we just made. Click OK. Mm, look at that. Just makes it pop right out of those rocks. So we like this take a look at your whole thing again click on the back layer right here and you know we're liking what, what it looks like I'm liking this pretty well now remember if some things are not where they need to be we can always move layers up and down like for example we just got rid of everything because we put this back in front of everything else so make sure that you remember we can kind of adjust things your cob should always be on the top and your text and your pictures should always be in the middle with your back on the bottom so make sure you have those orders for those of you that may have some issues with needing your text to show up because white didn't work black didn't work it's just we need something to make it a little better so I'm going to show you a little tip a little trick on how to do that right now we're going to duplicate this layer and it's going to be right there boom now on the top layer we leave the text on the bottom layer this one right here we are going to remove the text. So let's get rid of all this other stuff. We don't need to see it. We just need to see this. Let's go ahead and edit that text. We're going to hit Control A, delete it, get rid of it. All right, now we're going to use our paint bucket. We have white text, so we want a black background. Boom. And let's look and see how that looks now with everything else. All right. So. That's okay, but you'll notice it's real close to the top and it's real extra on the bottom. Let's go ahead and literally just use our move tool and move it up ever so slightly using that fine tool moving. All right, click off of it to look at it. Much better. Now, this is going to be super dark. We don't need that solid black. In fact, we can add some transparency so we can still see the picture behind it. In order to do that, super easy, click on our layer that we want to work with, right click, edit those attributes of that layer. And right here we have opacity. This sets the transparency of that black. So I don't think we need quite 
we need to be able to see through it. Let's go to 75, let it go. And now, as you can see, we have made a still a see-through background, but it allows our text to be read much easier. Also notice that we've tucked this behind the cob, so it gives one more element that really makes Richie come away from the frame. It's like he's popping right out of this frame. Now, I will say, this is not necessary for all tributes. This is only going to be necessary for some of your backgrounds that have some odd coloration that white text and black text won't be readable. They will not be able to be seen. So you may need to do this, add this on those. All right, guys, it's time for the export process. Let's do it. As you remember, we are going to save this, okay? And we're going to save it right as a XCF. All right, I've already done this once, so I'm going to say I would click Save, and it's going to save it. Next, we're going to add a little proof, then save a proof. Make a big old text box. Change our font size to about a 300. We want it to be white, and we're just going to type in the words proof. We want that all caps. So again, white and... 300. That's good enough for me. I want to bold. Bold it up there. All right. Yours will be naturally bold. We can move this around. We can make this bigger if we want to. Sure. Let's scale it up. And then we can use our rotating tool to rotate it at about a 45 degree angle. And rotate that bad boy. We're going to move it into place right over top of pretty much everything that's vital and pull it all the way to the top. We're moving our layer all the way to the top. Boom. Now, they want to still be able to see what's underneath. So we're going to do like we did before with our text box and add a transparency to it. Knock this all the way down to about 20. Call that good. And we are good to go. All right. File. Export as. And we would call it Richie Proof. And again, I've already done this. So we would export as Richie Proof and export when it asks you for this. Ba -ba -boom. And finally, we're going to take those two, the proof and our page, our XCF page that we've made, and we're going to drop those into his folder and upload those so we have those forever all right that does our tutorial on how to make our senior tributes i hope that you are better understanding what to do and i hope that we are able to get this done good luck